Okay, just thought I'd do a video on this wicked devil here, Gabe the Street Preacher. Uh, I've done a video about him in the past, proving that he preaches a works-based salvation, that you basically have to save yourself by your holiness and your righteousness, and it's not about trusting in the righteous, righteousness of Jesus Christ, it's about trusting in your own self-righteousness to work your way to heaven. That's basically what he preaches. It's just Roman Catholicism repackaged. But came across this video of his where he claims that God gave him a vision of hell and he claims that oh it, you know it it lines up with the scriptures and stuff and what, what he's going to say has no basis in scripture whatsoever uh nobody in scripture has ever gone to hell and come back okay not one person jesus christ has the keys to hell obviously and when jesus christ went to hell he didn't go to hell as in he went to hell to be tormented he went down to abraham's bosom and gathered up the old testament saints jesus christ is the only person who has been down to this chamber called hell and come back and that was to gather up the old testament saints you can read about that in Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 53. Okay, Jesus Christ gathered up the Old Testament saints as a resurrection. So, nobody in hell has been to hell, sorry, nobody has been to hell and come back, except for Jesus Christ. So, these visions, and the thing of dreams and visions too, when in, I'll show you the scripture that you try to use, uh, about dreams and visions, because he, he's, a, he's a charismatic uh, heretic, you know, he believes in you know, the faking of the gifts of the Spirit, the Jewish sign gifts. But I'll show you, this is the verse they try to use to validate their their false dreams and visions. Acts chapter 2, verses 16 says, and, and notice this here, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay, it's quoting the book of Joel. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, the last days, okay, not now. Dreams and visions are not for now, they're for the last days. Okay, Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, in other words. Saith, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay? And it goes on to, to uh, give more details. But spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay, what's being quoted? Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 32. And it shall come, uh, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour, my, uh, pour out my spirit. I'm not good at reading on a computer. Pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and it goes down there. Okay? This is this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for Christians today. Christians don't need gifts of the spirit and, and sign gifts because we have the we have the completed word of God. Okay? Jews, they don't have that. They have they have the Old Testament, but they don't have the New Testament. Okay? So the sign gifts are for the, to confirm the, the New Testament to the Jews. Okay, nothing nothing to do with Christians today. We don't need sign gifts. Okay, we have the completed scriptures. But he goes on to explain this this vision of hell. He talks about how there's like, you know, just watch. I mean, he claims oh it's in scripture, but really it has no basis in scripture whatsoever. Okay, that's what we really got. Really, really have watch out. Have to watch out for these hell testimonies, because almost all of them do not line up with scripture. Okay, scripture is all you need. You don't need these hell testimonies. Uh, a lot of times. You know, it could, you know, it's a possibility, it could just be a demonic, you know, vision, but there's also the possibility they're just making it up too. You know, there's always that possibility. So let's get into this and show that this does not line up with the scriptures and that it's just more charismatic heresy. You may you continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those of you who are visiting today, who well, it's also worth pointing out too that a lot of these hell testimonies, the people who who talk about who talk about oh I've been to hell and come back, all of them preach a works based salvation, and they'll talk about people who lost their salvation and Christians who lost their salvation, they're work salvationists. All of them teach a works based salvation. That salvation by your your righteousness, not by Jesus Christ's righteousness. You know, kind of like how Satan in Isaiah chapter fourteen verse twelve to fifteen wanted to become like the Most High. He was self righteous. Self-righteousness, like the kind Gabe has, is satanic. That's why I call him a Satanist. Bring it back. Okay, sorry, just had to turn something off. Okay, let's get right into refuting this. Maybe unbelievers, I pray that you will have an ear today and listen to what the Spirit is saying. Amen. I believe the Lord gave me a an illumination last night uh, not a new revelation, not a new prophecy, but something that has already been stated in His Word. Uh, the Bible says... Something that has already been stated in His Word. Okay, we're going to see about that. If what He says lines up with the Scriptures. ...that there is going to be a great separation on the Day of Judgment. 
God will divide the wheat from the chaff, the righteous from the unrighteous, light from the darkness, sheep from the goats. And this division will take place. Okay, the sheeps and the goats in Matthew chapter 25 is at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, another thing, common thing these charismatic heretics do is they mix in the judgment at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble with the great white throne judgment. They often mix the two together. I've seen them do that quite a lot. The judgment in Matthew 25 is basically saints and people who made it through the time of Jacob's trouble, and he's dividing basically the people, the saints, the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, tribulation saints, as they're called, and basically people who took the mark and lost people. Okay, it's got nothing to do with with uh, the, the judgment, the, the great white throne judgment, or Christians. Nothing to do with that. Okay, but they often will mix the two together. So, again, Matthew 25, what he's referencing is about, is at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, just like Acts 2. It's inevitable. That is why God sent his son to be a ransom for our sins, that we may have a way out of God's wrath. Be because nothing that is vile or unholy has any... So God... Gave, he gave he gave a son as a appreciation for our sins, but then we have to earn our salvation by our holiness. That's what he preaches. You know, double talk. They'll say, oh, Jesus, you know, they'll hold signs, because these street preachers, they'll hold up signs, you know, Jesus saves from hell, but then they're saving themselves by their holiness. You know, how, how is Jesus saving you from hell if you're having to endure in holiness to save yourself? You know, it doesn't line up. Again, it's Roman Catholicism. Inheritance or can even reside in God's presence for eternity. Therefore, one must be thoroughly purified. And how do we get this thorough purification? See, see, this is what he's doing. He's mixing sanctification with salvation. He's saying you have to be purified in order to make it to heaven. No, sanctification happens after salvation. Okay? But again, these, these works devils, these charismatic straight preaching, these, these works salvation devils, these Satanists always do this. They'll mix sanctification, which is a process of the Holy Ghost cleaning, cleaning sin out of your life and changing life and making you a new creature, with salvation, which happens the moment you believe the gospel. You know, they, they love to do that. They always mix the two together. Roman Catholicism, because Roman Catholics, it, it's funny, these guys will say, oh, we're not Roman Catholics. Yet, just like the Catholics, the Catholics believe you have to basically die in a state of grace to be saved. These guys teach that you have to basically die in a state of holiness and a state of sinlessness to be saved. Roman Catholicism, okay? Sanctification and salvation are not the same thing, but these devils always like they mix the two together. Sanctification, it only comes through Jesus Christ, who was the spotless lamb that was slain for our sins. Amen. Propitiation for our sins. He died a sinless man, he rose, and all power has been given into him in heaven and on earth. Amen. And it's by the name of Jesus Christ that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. Amen. So, I want to explain to you what the Lord showed me last night. He gave me a quick vision of a conveyor belt. And on this conveyor belt were multitudes of people coming down. And they all had smiles on their faces. And they were filled with glee. And they were confident. And they were fully assured in where they were going. They had no sort of fear or no sort of anxiety. Okay, so he's saying he saw a conveyor belt with people with happy faces. Um, can I get a chapter and a verse, please? Where is this stuff at in Scripture? You know? Where, where, is, where is there in scripture that people are on a conveyor belt with happy faces and then, you know, huh? You know, chapter and verse, please. You know, where is it? This is not in the Bible. This is, you know, either he's making this up or, you know, there's some demonic influence there, which I tend to believe that the demonic influence is the more likely scenario. Or need for preparedness. They were pretty sufficient in their own eyes. And as they were coming down this conveyor belt, I had an impression in my spirit that they were, it was a, a group of people made up of every denomination, every sort of religion, every sort of sect of humanity, whether they're Buddhists, atheists, Catholics, Mormons, Lutherans, Seventh-day Adventists, Black Hebrew Israelites, um, agnostics, you name it, they're all on this conveyor belt, so-called Christians, lukewarm Christians. And as they were coming down this conveyor belt, they all stood with a, with a pretty stout face. 
But as they passed this certain partition in the conveyor belt that they did not see beyond, but I was able to see the people coming on the, uh, going through this uh, partition and to see their faces on the other side. And brothers and sisters, what I seen was horrendous. Okay, again, where's the stuff, you know, where's the stuff at in the Word of God? You know, where, where, where does Scripture teach this? You know, where in Scripture is there a conveyor belt with people with a happy expression, and then they, they get to a certain point and then they're not happy anymore? You know, this is, this is not biblical at all. Okay, I'm going to show you what the Bible actually says about hell, what happens when someone goes to hell, okay? And, you know, this is not what happens. There's no, there's no conveyor belt, so that kind of stuff. Again, you know, chapter and verse, please. Can I get a chapter and verse for any of this? I see them come through with faces of happiness and smiles, but as they go through the partition, their faces turn to frowns, to faces of agony, to faces of horror, to faces of torment, to faces of pain. They were weeping and gnashing their teeth in an instant, and all of a sudden the smiles were gone, the laughter was gone, the laughter turned to mourning and grieving. And, and they begin to drop off at the end of this conveyor belt into hell. And I felt the intensity of heat, and I knew it was, it was a tormenting heat. And at this point in my vision, my whole body began to tremble. And I felt the intensity and the urgency of, of the need to know who Jesus Christ truly is. You see, the Bible says that Jesus will profess unto them I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Okay, so then he goes on in the video and... They prophesied oh, in sorry. his name. I thought I'd pause the video. He goes on in the video and, and talks about you know, some scriptures, but here's what the Bible actually teaches about what happens when someone goes to hell, okay? Because he talks about those conveyor belts and then they're they're at, they're happy and then they, you know, none, none of this is scriptural at all. But here's what the Bible actually says. Okay, what happens when someone goes to hell? Uh, Luke chapter, okay, I'll start at verse 19. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. And there was a certain man, rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and spared, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And he went on a conveyor belt into a no, it doesn't say that. There's no mention of a conveyor belt. It says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So when he dies, he goes straight to hell. There's no conveyor belts, or, you know, he just goes straight to hell. He wakes up in hell after he dies. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the, or dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in his flame. And he goes down there. So again, where's the conveyor belts and, and it's not in there, okay? He dies and then he wakes up in hell right after. That's what's going on there. That's, that's what happens when someone goes to hell. So don't, don't believe these, these so-called hell visions. Again, all of them teach a work salvation and none of them line up with scripture, okay? So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.